gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to New Veterans Stadium and opening day. And thank you, because above all the festivities, the response that you have shown, making this a sellout months in advance, proves that Philadelphia has the best fans in the National League. On behalf of the Philadelphia Phillies, we thank you very much. It began on a cold April day in 1971 with a sellout crowd and a rookie broadcaster. It lasted for 33 summers, summers filled with hope, excitement, sometimes anguish, and above all else, a strong sense of fun. It was a great ride. And in this place named in honor of those who defend our freedom, we came together as a city to revel in the joys of the great American game. This is Harry Callis. The following show takes a long look back at the final weekend of Veterans Stadium, a time when legions of loyal fans were given one last chance to remember and reflect on this very special place. Friday, September 26, was to be the last night game ever played at the bat. The mood at game time was somewhat dampened by the cold reality that the Fightins had been eliminated from the wild card race by the Marlins. The giddy hope that these may not be the final games played at the bat had ended just the night before. Still, an air of celebration prevailed as the final innings began. Scores of heroes from the Vets' storied history were flocking into Philadelphia to see the old stadium bow out. Many fans paying tribute to Veterans Stadium in this the final innings weekend of the Vet. The lights will go out at Vets Stadium for the last time tonight. Been home to a lot of memories. Yes, sir. A season-long tradition of changing the countdown clock in right field had been a highlight every night. Here are just a few of the honored guests. Changing the number tonight, Larry Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, number 19, Greg Luzinski. Rico Bronia. Dallas Green, Gary Matthews, Gary Maddox, Jim Eisenreich, center fielder Lenny Dykstra, Larry Christensen, Mr. Ruley Carpenter, the Honorable Edward G. Randell, Having a nice round of applause for Rich Taylor and Harry Ashburn. Mike Kruko. The greatest ovation came for Tug McGraw, who had been battling brain cancer since spring training. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who threw the most important pitch in Phillies baseball history. Number 45, Tug McGraw. Well, we're down to three games now, down to two, and who but the big left-hander to do the countdown tonight? Chrissy to go along, showing lefty what to do. Best left-hander to ever suit up, isn't he? He was something. What a great guy, too. I mean, went through all those years. We didn't talk to the media, but you know, he was great with all us, and, and just a, just a wonderful guy. And boy, he's having a ball out there tonight. You can see it. Yeah, and people you talk to, they ask what kind of guy he is. You know, he's probably pretty quiet. You know, they think, well, he's, he's got to be pretty quiet. Yeah, right. He'll talk your ear off if you give him a chance. But. After the game, no one left the stadium. 
It was the last time for one more great vet tradition. Over the years, there was no better place in Philadelphia to watch fireworks set to a musical score than Veteran Stadium. And that night, we added a little something extra. On Saturday afternoon, the fans got to voice their opinions by choosing the all-vet team. The voting had taken place all summer and the ballots were in. As storm clouds formed overhead, the team was announced. We begin with the manager of the all-vet team. He's Big D, led the Phillies to their only world championship in 1980. Welcome, please, Dallas Green. has handed me the lineup for the All-Veteran Stadium team. Leading off, Philly shortstop and manager, Larry Boa. Batting second, he's the crocker, John Crock. Batting third, we still enjoy his special talents on the field. Right fielder, Bobby Abreu. And batting fourth. Three-time National League MVP, Hall of Famer, Michael Jack Schmidt. Hitting fifth for Dallas Green's nine. He's the big guy, the ball, Craig Luzinski, left field. Batting six, the Secretary of Defense, Gary Lee Maddox. Hitting seven. Second baseman, watch Sammy run, Juan Samuel. Well, we're gonna have to speed it up here as it's coming down right smart, so let's introduce the rest of the team for you. Behind the plate, Darren Dalton. You fans voted a right-hand pitcher and a left-hand pitcher as the starters. Kurt Schilling was voted as the right-hander. Schilling is still playing, of course, for Arizona, so he can't be here. The left-hander is Hall of Famer, four-time Cy Young Award winner, Steve Carlton. And the closer, who else? You gotta believe you fans voted for Tut McGraw. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only appropriate that the All Vet team also include Hall of Fame caster Harry Callis. Wouldn't you know it? That was the only rain shower of the day. Now, I don't know if it was some kind of strange karma, or perhaps the baseball gods didn't agree with all of the choices. Maybe it was my partner, Richie Ashburn, up there in the heavens playing a trick on some of his old friends. After all, 
His Whiteness was always keen on people not taking themselves too seriously. As the game got underway, a new Phillies hero in only his first year at the bat was cementing his relationship with the hometown faithful. Changing the countdown clock today, Phillies Hall of Fame third baseman, Mike Schmidt. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today is also Mike Schmidt's birthday. So, with the help of Phillies Stadium organist Paul Richardson, let's sing happy birthday to Mike Schmidt. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mike. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Mike Schmidt. Michael Jack was easily the greatest Phillies player to play at the vet. The strains of his birthday song filtered out across the parking lot to Citizens Bank Park a place where new heroes will emerge and continue the pursuit of glory. One man stands poised to accept the mantle. away from Michael Jack Smith's club record of 48. Ballpark memories come in many forms, but probably none can top an exciting come from behind win. On this day, the Phillies squared off against one of the greatest closers in the game. It off the middle, off the glove of Garcia, base hit center field. Kobe scores. Bills win seven to six here at Veterans Stadium. A dramatic comeback by the Bills who tie the game off John Smokes in the ninth and win it here in the tenth by a score of seven to six. It was a sweet victory, but the mood was tempered by the sad realization that only one more game would be played on this field of memories. Today we take you on a journey. The only thing needed are your memories of Veterans Stadium. Your first impressions might have been of its very first day. Perhaps you came to see its greatest slugger tear the cover off the ball or its most dominant pitcher reach an unforgettable milestone. You might have been one of the hearty few hung around to revel in the wee hours of the morning, and then returned a few months later with 60,000 of your friends for a bigger celebration. You might have come recently on a beautiful spring afternoon to witness history in the making, then stood and watched in wonder as the team's latest and greatest addition endeared himself to his team and his town. Your memories might not even be pleasant ones, but every time your heart aches, there is always a source of ultimate comfort. Wherever your mind's eye takes you, they are images and emotions that will endure for all time. But the setting that served as their companion will soon be no more. The final game of a baseball season carries a certain sadness, that bittersweet feeling that comes with the end of a long journey. 
but the final game in the history of a stadium, that was a little overwhelming. Still, the mood behind the scenes was rather upbeat. The clubhouse was alive with the usual banner. And the ground crew was busy getting dialed up for their special day. Fans were pouring in from all over the Delaware Valley. Some had seen the closing of old Connie Mack Stadium. Some had been to the Vets' first game. And some were coming for the first time. Each fan had their own unique set of memories to which they were ready to add one last special day. One fan even decided to make his own documentary about the event. Hi, I'm G. Miller, Phillies fan, and these are some of my home movies from the final innings at the Vet. G. Miller brought his 16-year-old son to the game and videotaped the entire day. Doing. Going to be a party for sure here today. Hopefully, we can light the candles. Officers, I have a question today. Will the dogs be on the field for the last game? God only knows. God only knows? Okay. How long have you been a Phillies fan, sir? Uh, for 54 years. 54? You don't look that old. <laughs> That's exactly how old I am. <laughs> Ah, baseball, truly a child sport. Kelly, who's your favorite Philly? Tommy. Tommy, Jim Tommy. You see him hit that home run yesterday? There's yep. two. There's two. Filing in for the last time at the vet. Coming in, giveaways. Yep. Here it is in all its splendor. Hey, you want to play dueling video cameras? <laughs> now, if you look carefully enough, you'll see tails. Now there's some tales. If this, this is very emotional. This will be another day I'll remember forever. Are you going to the new park? Yes, I am. Are you going I'm to have? Looking forward to it. I prefer the Phillies over the Eagles, or it doesn't matter. The Phillies people tip better. <laughs> ah, okay. The Phillies people tip better. Ah, that's good news. That puts a little pressure on me too, doesn't it? All right. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> The Philadelphia Boys Choir has been a traditional staple among our anthem singers. And once again, they did a magnificent job. Is this planned or is this, uh, you know, one of these things that just happened by coincidence in a Philadelphia native Jerry Crawford calling the last game ever at the vet? I it? think they planned it because well, Shag, nice. his daddy Shag had the first game here behind the plate. Seventh birthday wishes to Florence Leesner of Northeast Philly. Florence wishes from her family. She attended the last game at Connie Mack, the first game here at the Vet. Florence celebrating her 87th right here in the last game at Veterans Stadium. Clearly, the most memorable feature of Veterans Stadium was the people who filled the stands. Year in and year out, they brought a passion and loyalty to the venue that is rarely matched in baseball in any city. In the later years, they turned the stadium into a canvas for the creative expression of Philly's fever. Feel the memories. Veteran Stadium, the concession stands in 1971, the first year of this ballpark. Probably looked a little different. They look like this. Concession stands in 71, and Anthony Gargano is with a couple of concessionaires here at Veteran Stadium, Anthony. Hey, Harry. Now, this is the food that we've been eating at the vet for so long. And these are the gals that have served us. 
Me Josephine? I see this place go up, and I'm gonna see this place go down. I've been working 33 years here. <laughs> and here's Mary. And I've been here 25 years, and all my family work here. And we've been happy at the, all the time we've been here. How long you been working here? Seven years, I think. Yeah, you having fun? Oh, yeah, it's great. Are, are, the, are the fans? Nice people, good crowd. Good people, good fans? And lots of money. Oh, I can't even spend it over. Yeah, how long you been a Phillies fan? Too long. <laughs> Much of the day was carefully scripted, but spontaneity was also the order of the day as Dick Allen and Jay Johnstone ran out to help the ground crew. Rose, we are we going to get him into the Hall of Fame? Yes, we will. And I predict that he changes his side today at the bat. Whoa, that's a heavy duty that's prediction. Heavy duty prediction. HK, Harry Callis changes a number only fitting. You broke in with this stadium, started the stadium, and you will finish this stadium. And a touching moment. Putting that zero countdown number up there. And Obviously, the wonderful gesture to his whiteness, the number one touching moment. And what a applause, what an ovation. He's there with us, Alan. Yes, he is. Deep within the stadium, preparations for the grand finale were beginning. Uh, we're here to celebrate the wonderful 30, 30, what, three years that we've had at the vet. And so, uh, what could be better? This is this. I'm still alive. <laughs> so it's a happy day. I mean, it's and, a great there's day. There's some sadness because an old friend, the vet, is leaving us. Uh -huh. On some counts, you guys lived here for years. Mm -hmm. But it's a happy day as well. It is. It's um, you know, the new stadium is going to make us all forget about the vet. That's going to be a beautiful thing. But in the meantime, we got to make sure that uh, this whole veteran stadium experience is uh, is capped off. In a, in, a, in a wonderful, exciting way. Great sign right there. Yes, Don't sir. cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. So many, many memories here from Veterans Stadium in its 33 year history. Those new home citizens bank park. Full count to Utley, ground ball. They're going to get one. They are going to turn a double play, and that is going to end the ball game and end the Phillies season and end the Veterans Stadium. After the game, emotion ran high. Larry Boa had spent the bulk of his baseball life at Veterans Stadium, and the finality of the day seemed to hit him all at once. It was a pretty special place. I guess playing here, you know, well, defying the odds, uh, winning a world championship, playing with Hall of Famers, Carpenters, uh, Bill Giles, Paul Owens, Dallas, a lot of good things. Yet backstage, the mood was jovial as the Phillies prepared to throw one final spectacular ceremony to bring down the curtain on this wonderful place. It came along at the perfect time, a multi-purpose stadium built to suit a team on the rise. As their legion of new stars grew in stature, it served as their stage, and a grand one it was. It never became a shrine, but it did reflect its city's character. Rugged, worn, tested, unyielding. Veteran Stadium has one mark of distinction. It is the only home in which the Phillies became world champions. The final innings have been played. Now we say goodbye to a dear friend whose time has come. Welcome back to Veteran Stadium. Time now for some final memories from this ballpark. I'm Andy Musser. 
Pleased to be back here today working with Chris Wheeler for some of the memories that we shared over the years in this park. And Wheels, I don't know about you, but uh, a lot of our life was spent here. I was thinking that just looking at you. <laughs> that, you know, you say, what, what are you thinking about right now? I'm thinking about all the great times that, that you and I had together working on radio and television here and back in the old WCAU days. I tell everybody my my recollections of Veterans Stadium started on April 10th on opening day when you got me tickets. And I sat in section 334 and I was a fan watching the game that day. So I uh, started out as a fan, was lucky enough to work here all these years and work with you all those years. and. It's, it's great, Andy. I mean, it's been a fun day. It's been a very emotional day, and I'm sure what we're going to go through right now is not going to leave a dry eye in the house. I suppose that's true. With Harry doing the MC, why, well, that's almost guaranteed. Uh, we're going to uh, head on down to the field right now and join and PA announcer Dan Baker. To help with the closing ceremonies, please welcome the person who was the master of ceremonies, right here at Philadelphia Veterans Stadium when the vet opened in 1971. The voice of the Phillies, Hall of Fame broadcaster, Harry Callis! <laughs> Harry Callis! Thank you. Thank you all. I love you. Veterans Stadium. God bless you. Thank you so much. Veterans Stadium is a building. The memories come from the great people who work here. The players who grace this field, donning the uniform of the fighting Phils. And most of all, the memories come from you the best fans in America. We love you. There are some of those who can't be with us today who are looking down on us from above. We thank you. Whitey, I know you're with us today. Thank you, Whitey. There's been a lot said and written about Veterans Stadium. Skip Denenberg, a Philadelphia songwriter, folk singer, and Phillies fan, said it best in this musical video you will see on Fanavision.
just a game It's a place we will remember forever. As you know, baseball is a game of numbers. In the history of Veterans Stadium, 2,617 regular season and 25 postseason games have been played here. More than 500 players have worn Phillies pinstripe uniforms during more than 24,000 innings. The biggest number of all, it's you fans. More than 68 million. A few fans have been here to see the Phils play. Thank you. God bless you. Maybe you saw the last game at Connie Mack Stadium or the first game here at the Vet. Now you're taking part in another historic moment in Philly's history. Perhaps you came to your first game of the Vet with your dad or your mom, a special one-on-one -on -one occasion you will always cherish. Perhaps you came to your first game as a family. Family outings have always been one of the many beauties of this great game. Maybe you came with a large group or just a couple of friends or neighbors. Perhaps you had your first date here at the vet. Maybe you even got engaged. It has happened here very often. Perhaps the vet was a place you saw only on TV or heard about on radio broadcasts. My colleagues and I were honored to make you part of the vet scene through these 33 years. Veterans Stadium was once a crown jewel, the pride of the city, the team, and the fans. Because of father time, the vet's undergone a little wear and tear. It's only fitting that Veterans Stadium be treated with the utmost respect as we begin the closing ceremonies. One more memory we can take with us today. Before we begin the final curtain call, we want to recognize a very special person. He is in his 48th year with the Phillies. He served the organization as a scout, director of the minor leagues, general manager, twice as manager, including the 1983 National League Championship Phillies. Turn your attention to Fanavision for a video highlighting the career of a man who is the architect of the great Phillies teams of the 70s and 80s. Hi, this is Dallas Green. If you had to select an MVP for the 33 years of Veterans Stadium, my most valuable person has to be the Pope, Paul Owens. With almost half a century in professional baseball, I've never seen a better judge of talent or a better ability to know what's in a man's heart. Nobody outworked him, and nobody gave back more to the sport. 
Most of the players selected by you, the fans, to the All Veterans Stadium team came courtesy of Mr. Paul Owens. Take a bow, Pope. You certainly deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul the Pope Owen. Thank you, Pope, for the wonderful years you put in to make Veterans Stadium such a great memory for us. Paul the Pope Owens. <laughs> Veterans Stadium truly is a field of memories, and we are going to go through the years. We ask you to keep your eyes on the field and fan vision as we go through the years of Veterans Stadium, starting with the very first year, 1971. We want to mention to you, for those of you who are tuning in the broadcast today, there is going to be no further announcement on the PA as these various players come out. It's going to be done in silence for effect. And we want to keep you abreast of Who's going to come out? And you see Senator Jim Bunning, Rick Wise, and Don Money. First year of Veterans Stadium. Jim Bunning with the first game. Rick Wise, of course, pits a no hitter that year in Cincinnati. Hit six home runs for the Phils. And Don Money hit the first home run at Veterans Stadium. Their longtime employees are going to lead the guys out with the flags. That's Michael DiMuzio right there leading the 71 guys out. Ready for the 72 team, including Terry Harmon, Mike Ryan, and Willie Montanez. There's Irish now living up in New Hampshire and retired and just enjoying himself. And the great Guillermo Willie the Philly Montanez coming out now. Seventy three being represented now by Mike Roganzinski and Wayne Twitchell. <laughs> Rogo. Rogo still makes his home in the area, of course. And Twitch was a member of the All Star team. Nineteen seventy four being represented by a true gentleman a fellow who apparently hasn't aged today <laughs> gentleman Jim Lombor Dr. Jim Lombor right. Really, right a doctor of dental surgery Good there's Lonnie you. great hero with the Red Sox well this uh, next gentleman should gain quite a round of applause as soon as they realize who's coming out because he was voted many times one of the fan all time favorites TT Tony Taylor First year of joining you, Wheels. And uh, skipper Danny Ozark. The and Wizard of O's. The Wizard Oz. of O's. He's yeah. having a great time being back here this weekend. You know, it's been fun to catch up with Danny and talk about the old times. What a good guy. Led the team to three division titles, 76, 77, 78. And he looks like he's going out to make a pitching change. And here comes Gene Garber behind him, a guy he used to bring into games. You know, would come in and stop uh, stop hitting streaks like he did with Pete Rose. Now we go to 1977. This will be represented by one of baseball's funny guys, Jay Johnstone. 
I love Jay here in Philadelphia of course he worked with us on the prison telecast. Nineteen seventy eight. One of the great defensive outfielders with the Phillies Jerry Mud Martin. Jerry uh, still a member of the organization works in the minor leagues. Full house here at Veteran Stadium to watch these ceremonies. On to 79, representative of that team coming out, Warren Brewstar out of the bullpen. Brewman, sinker, slider, those nasty eyes. <laughs> Nobody really liked to hit off him. He did a great job here for a number of years, and he's still off. Another guy who's also a member of the organization working in the minor leagues. Now comes 1980. Yeah, and uh, we'll have quite a few representatives of this club coming back, as you might imagine. There's the skipper, Dallas Green. Marty Bice from Dickey Knowles, Del Unser, Ruben Amaro Jr., and John Brukovich. By the way, Dallas obviously enjoying himself. He was hoarse today, yet. Yeah. Laryngitis. A lot of guys were thankful for that. <laughs> for Dallas to be anywhere near silent is a miracle. There's Dickey Knowles. Yeah, so Marty come out. It was 5 0 in September. Dickey Knowles, who pitched so well, of course, knocked George Brett down in that World Series game. A lot of people think that changed some things around. I think he does a great job in the organization now, helping with drug and alcohol counseling. There's Dell, Dell Unser. How many big hits did he get? Boy, he was amazing off the bench. The world champions that year, and we're wearing gold rings from that year, the only one in the history of the organization. <laughs> Kind of neat too. All these guys that are coming out are still working for the organization, except for Marty Bystrom is in private business, but the other guys are all part of the organization. Ruben Amaro Sr. and of course his uh, son is the assistant general manager of the team, and Ruby involved as well. <laughs> Comes our boy Johnny Bucco. Third base coach Johnny. He's a wired in fixture around here. He can smile. Johnny doesn't smile a whole lot on the field, but there he goes. One team, Dick Ruthven represents for the 81ers. And Rufus, of course, was a big part of the 80 team, and also an 81 pitcher, the Braves and the Cubs. Son's a pretty good ball player at uh, Georgia. Didn't have to go too far to get the 82 representative. Just down in the dugout, we're talking about Greg Gross. GG like Unser, lots of big hits at 82 team. And Greg Rose is finishing up another year as a Phillies hitting instructor. Sandy said you have to go too far to get this guy. Still makes his home in the area. As we move along to 83, that one, of course, was a pennant winning year as well. Phillies against the Orioles in the World Series that year. And Bobby Dernier gave us a real thrill that year. And so did Al Holland, who will be right behind Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Dernier just did a head first. I night he had that inside the park home run yeah. where he slid head first. That was great. Hope, Hope. appreciated that. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Bullet, Al Hala.
Mr. T, they called him those days. Eighty-four, and our broadcast colleague who has been such a good friend to all of us, L.A. Larry Anderson. Hard to believe he goes back that far. <laughs> Yeah, we just re reminded Andy walked right by home plate because he wasn't real familiar with that area. <laughs> Heard you guys kid about that quite a bit. Yeah, he didn't hit, he didn't hit too much. Comes Ozzy. Ozzy had some big hits. We're talking about Ozzy Virgil in 85. One of the all around good guys. <laughs> Pump him up, Ozzy. Next guy is an old, another old broadcast colleague. Huh? Really had a nice uh, get together with Teak this morning. Here's Kent DeColvey. A lot of people remember Teak as being a member of those great pirate teams, but he had some pretty good years here in Philadelphia too. Teak is now running an independent league team south of Pittsburgh. Here's the rock Steve Bedrosian. He had some bullets. He sure did. <laughs> 33 years in this ballpark and acknowledging every year and you see it starting to grow throughout the outfield going from left to right. Bedrock just <laughs> he just sat down out there in the mound. He's a beauty right? Your classic relief pitcher Andy. Yeah still wearing the socks the same way too. Here comes another one. Oh yeah well this guy is legitimate because he's a left hander. This is another beauty right here. This is our good friend Don Carmen. Did that game on Prism, where the Phillies played the Mets, and this fella hit two home runs in the first inning. And for a long time, the only player in the history of the game to do that, until a couple of Mariners did it, Mike Cameron and Brett Boone. But Von Hayes had that record. And listen to the cheer for the guy that used to boo. Huh. That's nice. the stick and he wore number nine because he was a fan of Ted Williams now this gentleman still makes his home in the area Lancaster Pennsylvania's contribution to the 90 team Tommy her a lot of his glory years against the Phillies for the Cardinals gosh he was a tremendous player Tommy coming here and contributing for a while Pitched a no hitter in a Phillies uniform. He'll always be remembered for that. Tommy Green. One of these fun guys to be around. <laughs> Bill and Nancy Giles enjoying the ceremonies as much as anybody here today. Just great how many of these guys, they, they're just, they stayed in shape. They look great. It's fun to be around them this week. Here comes Dunkey. Mariano Duncan 
always a smiling face. Another really good guy to be around. The 93 team was one of the most appreciated around here, Wheels, no doubt about that. Oh, and here comes Mickey. And still love Mickey more and Beanie. Great years here. And do you recognize this guy? <laughs> Mitch Williams. <laughs> Listen to this ovation. Yeah. See the emotions of facing a lot of these guys, Andy's are walking out. Yeah. They're feeling it. We're going to 94 now, and Spikey Randy Reddy represents that team. Randy Reddy over the John Cruck deal from San Diego. Had some good years here for the Phils. Now as a minor league manager in the Brewers organization. Or I mean the Detroit organization. In 95, Tyler Green joined the Phillies. And there's Larry Tyler Miller's still is in the area. And here comes Gary Varsha, yeah. bench coach. 96, Ricky Bo, Ricky Batalico first on the scene. The Pope and Ed Wade. The pupil. Frigga Metallica was in camp with the uh, Diamondbacks this year, hurt his arm and really didn't get the pitch out much. Still a young guy, he wants to keep playing baseball. On to 1997. We already greeted his daddy, but here is Ruben Amaro Jr. Now the assistant general manager of the Phillies under Ed Wade. Ruben doing a great job in the front office. Nineteen ninety eight and one of the fan favorites that year was Rico Bronya. Rico's doing a little football coaching, basketball coaching up in Connecticut. Did some post-game stuff for us this year. Uh, Comcast post-game live, and here comes Gomesy. Wayne Gomes was a Triple A with Scranton Wilkesbury. Out of Old Dominion. Gentleman in the game right here, a guy that pitched for the Phils for a few years. Andy now with the Atlanta Braves was injured all year. Paul Burr. Here's Bernie. Some of the guys that are still on this club started with 2000. Right, uh, Ramon Henderson, of course, is the bullpen coach. Amari Talamaco, who pitched yesterday, and Tomas Perez, who played today. Here as well. Tony Scott, current first base coach, Nick Punto, Jason Michaels, David Coggin, and Brandon Duckworth, also all representing 2001.
That guy right there at a heck of a year for the Phillies this year, Jason Michael. He was just tremendous in a utility role. He plays the game right. Gonna be a kick, Andy, for some of these young guys like Brandon Duckworth and Nick Punzo come walking out on a day like this. And, yeah. and now we go to last year, and uh, Wheels, these two, uh, these fellows are all still current members of the film. Sure. Carlos Silva. Some of the guys, you know, had flights and all, maybe, maybe won't be part of it. But they're trying to bring out as many as possible. Todd Pratt. This next guy coming out, Larry Bowen, did a heck of a thing today. He got him in the game. Dan Fleasek might retire after this year. Pratty, a big ovation. But I thought it was really great to see Dan Plesek get the ball game today and get a strikeout and maybe his last batter that he ever faced. One of the, one of the great guys and heck of a pitcher that's ever been in the game. Well, if he's going to retire, this is a terrific way for him to remember his final day in a big league uniform. Yeah, takes a little dirt. And here comes Vincente Padilla. That's some year. And the 2003 banner coming out. Billy Boy. All the way, Temple, Joe Kerrigan. Another one of my broadcast partners. That's really. right. There's Chase Utley. Brett Myers, of course. Brett Myers, a first full season in the major leagues, one in double digits, and they have a lot of hope for Brett Myers to be some pitcher. The next guy coming out might have been their best pitcher all year. When well, he get right down to Real Cormier. He really did. He had a terrific year. Where would the Phillies will kind of been this year without Real Cormier? His year started with standing boos. It's interesting. The first game here, he got booed almost out of the ballpark. And listen to this six months later. So baseball is. That's Kelly Stanett. Came over to deal from Cincinnati. Josh Hancock coming out now. Got to pitch a couple innings today. Some of the young guys, Jeff Geary, Travis Chapman will be coming out behind him. Some of the guys from Scranton that got a call up in September and got some major league experience. Travis Chapman. And that course is Ryan Matson, the young right hander at a fine year at Scranton. Got his major league debut yesterday, puts a couple scoreless innings. One other young player, Anderson Machado. And 
a big hand for all these guys. Dan Baker's going to take it back pretty soon, Andy. The starting lineups for the Philadelphia Phillies. This will be, of course, the current player and some of the great Phillies from the past who have played the same position. These are the left fielders, Pat Burrell, Milt Thompson, and the ball, Greg Luzinski. Bulls barbecue on Ashburn Alley next year. And he'll do a fine job at that. But he will. <laughs> he'll let us know what's good out there. The mighty bull. Now we go to what a group the this center is fielders, be. yeah. Great center fielders have controlled here, starting with this year's Marlon Bird. Marlon Bird, really. Had an unbelievable year once he got in that leadoff spot. And a lot of hope for him. Lenny Dykstra, the dude. <laughs> One of the heroes of the 93 club coming out. A lot of this is a prize for the fans right now. I mean, they don't know who's going to be coming out. And this is neat stuff. Gary Lee Maddox. There he is. Gary Lee coming next after the dude. Home run in the 83 World Series. Fielder starting with the current occupant, Bobby Abreu, and you see that Bake McBride and Jim Eisenreich will be coming out. Izzy should get a tremendous hand. He was always one of the most popular players, even though he wasn't here all that long. The hands are going to be sore. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're shaking, Bake. One of our favorites. Jake and Bake, a St. Louis businessman now. Got his knees replaced and he's walking pretty good. Yeah. We're a lot better. Here's Izzy. Oh, wait to hear this ovation. Yeah. is next. Here's Jim Tomey. Boy, the fans loved him this year. What a privilege to watch him play his first year. Philadelphia fans always appreciated this next guy, too. Dick, don't call me Richie Allen. Richard Anthony Allen, he's had a fun, fun weekend. He still works for the ball club. And he lights up the room when he walks in it. The Wampum Walloper. <laughs> Next guy's going to get a few cheers, too. He's done a great job in the booth. He has. He's been your colleague this summer. There he is. My boy Johnny. He's not an athlete, he's a baseball player. <laughs> 
Tomasino Polanco at second base. That's Tomasino. Yeah. Tomasino. Yeah. They moved. I guess they moved a few things around. Glad to see Tomas is still around. So like I said, some guys probably have to leave a little early, but most of them are going to stick around. They thought. We know the fans will recognize the other two candidates we oh. have at second base. Manny Trio. Here's Manny. Thousand watt smile. One of the best arms of any second baseman in the history of baseball. And another great, great fan favorite. Sammy Juan Samuel. The all bet team. Sammy with the Detroit Tigers, and he had a long year. He's glad to be here. Stop now and current occupant Jimmy Rollins. We're pretty good guys coming out right now, and really. Jimmy and Stock, Kevin Stocker, and Larry Bow will get some ovation. Same plot, oh, yeah. Dallas Green and Larry Boa. In many ways, Andy. Bo can hardly contain himself right there. It's David Bell. Phillies can't wait to get him back and healthy next year. We're going to have some fan cheers for Dave Hollins and Michael Jack, too, when they come out. Here's Headley. Arguably the best player ever to have worn a Phillies uniform. Oh, yeah. Here he comes. Nobody appreciated those long home runs more than Big D. Nobody appreciates this ovation more than Michael Jack after what used to go on here. <laughs> he won him over though. Oh, late David. in his career. What a player. You talked about not many players smiling on a ball field. We didn't see too many smiles out of Michael Jack anywhere during the years when he was a player here. Here come the catchers. Mike Lieberthal will be followed by Booney and Dalton. Playoffs, not the World Series yet. There's Dutch. 
here again one of the most popular players from one of the most popular teams the 93 club. I hope the fans give Kevin Bill what a nice cheer here now. I mean, it's a little tough afternoon here, but it's time to cheer this guy. He had a heck of a year for him. There you go. Look at that uni. Look at that uni. One night they wore that, and that was enough. <laughs> Christensen became famous for actually pitching a game with a broken arm. Right. Amazing courage. One year in that, one game in that union, that was enough. <laughs> See why? Oh, that was ugly. I wonder if he lost the uh, straw vote to wear that thing today. <laughs> they're all getting Give a up kick the short one. Yeah, they're getting a kick out of him coming out that thing. Cy Young Award winner John Denny. JD still in baseball working for the Diamondbacks. Yep. Wow, what a show. Well, they were the right handed pitchers, of course. We're going to go to the left handed pitchers next. Here's Randy Wolf. I suppose we're going to see Danny Jackson come out and pump him up, wouldn't you think? Oh, he'll give him a little shove. I think. And then the big left hander will be along. Oh, yeah. Look at Harry's encouraging <laughs> Danny Jackson down there to pump him up. There's DJ. DJ will do something. Oh, yeah. The lefty weight behind him. <laughs> you watch. <now. laughs> there you go. There you go. Say no more. Please join me in singing Old Lang Syne to our beloved Veterans Stadium. Now the closing ceremonies will continue with each player on the field getting one last chance to touch home plate. We'll begin with 1971 and Jim Bunning. 
the winning pitcher in the first game here in 1971. And will continue on through the years. The players touching home play. Honor for me to present for you the final three memories of the great Veterans Stadium. strikeout for Steve Carlton. For the final moment on this great ball field here at Veterans Stadium, the final moment to take to the mound was time to get one last out. Who do you call on? Pitching to the Phillies, number 
Two pitch to Willie Wilson, struck him out! Phillies are world champions of baseball! Number 45, Tuck the greatest in America. Everybody down in this field and everybody with the Phillies organization, we love you. Without you, 
we wouldn't be here. Thank you so much. And now, Veterans Stadium is like a 3-1 pitch to Michael Jack or to Jim Tomey. It's on a long drive. It's out of here. God bless you.